One minute and 40 seconds, uh, as you can see the clock left in the count. Uh, a countdown that has been delayed uh, several times for this mission. Uh, twice uh, they didn't get this close because they had hardware problems and had to fix them. Uh, this morning uh, there were no hardware problems, but it was the weather. A heavy deck of clouds between 14 and 19,000 feet were uh, too thick for NASA to fly through. They have been thinning out for the past hour. One minute, 15 seconds. All systems are go for launch for Columbia's 11th space flight. Columbia is the oldest orbiter. Uh, it was the first one to fly into space. It is 10 years old. And uh, this one, mission is a nine day to take a look at the effects of microgravity on human space travelers. There's about uh, 45 seconds left in the count right now. Again, no problems in the last uh, five minutes. T minus 40 seconds and counting. Coming up on the T minus 31 second mark, when we have a go for auto sequence start. T minus 31 seconds. Columbia's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9. We have a go for engine start. 6, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff of Columbia on the first dedicated medical research flight. Full program, Houston. Ready roll, Columbia. Houston now controlling road maneuvers underway. Maneuver complete. Columbia now heading in a heads down attitude on course for a 39 degree orbit. Engines now throttling down as Columbia prepares to pass through the air of maximum dynamic pressure. Columbia now at 20,000 feet, downrange distance one nautical mile. Engines now throttling back up. Columbia, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds. Columbia now 55,000 feet altitude, downrange distance six nautical miles, traveling 2,150 feet per second. Good hydraulic systems aboard the orbiter, good fuel cells providing electrical power. Columbia's three main engines still at 104%, performing well. Altitude now 90,000 feet. Downrange distance now 15 nautical miles, velocity 3,400 feet per second. Standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. SRB separation confirmed. Columbia now at 174,000 feet. Downrange distance 34 nautical miles. Standing by for the performance call. Columbia, performance is nominal. Roger. All right. Columbia is now headed uh, towards its orbit. The solid rocket boosters have separated, and as you can see, they're falling down to the ocean where they'll be retrieved by a couple of ships that have been waiting there since yesterday. It is the beginning of a nine and a half day mission, a mission where they will be taking a look at uh, a lot of the microgravity effects uh, on space travelers and the effects that uh, they would have for long duration. CNN's John Zarella joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. John, uh, you could uh, see it not as n clearly as we have seen them in the past. We couldn't see the solid rocket separation uh, this time. First time I can remember in a long time we haven't been able to see that. Right, that's exactly right. Uh, it was a, a lot clearer than we had expected, though, just as uh, you were getting into the last uh, minute or so. The sun came out brightly, and 
it cleared up nicely, particularly over at the landing site, if they would have had to make an emergency return here. And uh, the sun is behind the clouds again now, but as everyone saw, it was a thin layer of clouds that they ended up going through. So finally, the third try, the charm, Columbia on the way, Tom. All right, so the mission is going to be nine days. Plus, we, of course, will have continuing coverage of the Columbia mission throughout this life sciences. And we'll be back with more news here on CNN in just a moment.